Hey everyone, Jack Mordick here. <sighs> Before I start, I would like to say that domestic abuse is a very real problem. And, as a former victim of it myself, I would ask that you, you know, try to reach out to your friends, or really anyone that you think can help you, in a situation where you might find yourself alone and hopeless and just know that one day things will get better but um now then today i wanted to talk about the sonic characters that suffer from domestic abuse and no not dulce from archie comics although yes she is very much a prime example of this but someone that a, or rather, a group of characters that is generally kind of overlooked by the fan base, and fair enough by the writers themselves of Sega. Um, but these characters are none other than the Zeddy. In fact, if you this is actually backed up and substantiated it, all the way back in the original game they debuted in Lost World. At least if you uh, play the English dub. I don't know about the Japanese version. But uh, in the English dub, there's a line from Zaz where he, uh, after you beat him, he says, The boss is gonna beat me. And it's kind of played off for laughs, but, you know, even in, like, the uh, IDW comics, which uh, are also part of the game canon, for the record, they're not an alternate universe, they'll be stupid guys. Um... During the Metal Virus arc, there's this moment where, in response to hearing, you know, dissent coming from the other Zeddies, Ava kind of lunges out at Xena, and she and the rest of the, you know, Zeddy look genuinely afraid. That's, an, that's a reaction that not even Eggman is able to elicit from them, ever. These characters are genuinely afraid of Zavok, except for, except for, you know, Master Zick, who is very much the fucking asshole that he is, looking with Zavok as, at, with pride, because he's kind of a monster like that. I think Master Zick is a character that is also kind of overlooked while we're on the topic. I mean, he is the guy that basically taught Zavok how to be as vile as, and cruel as he is. He's basically the guy that taught him how to be a monster. And, you know... I think it's worth noting that, you know... Master Zig is very much a disgusting character, but they don't really establish this enough. I mean, he did all this terrible... He had taught all this terrible shit and then just goes home to retire in his fucking garden and gets basically gets away with it. Now... Yeah, no, the Zeddy are very much a tragic set of characters that you you see them kind of view the world in a, such a destructive rampage sort of way. And you basically see the toll that, you know, domestic abuse can have on you. You see the, the fear, ear, the anger, the hatred, all of it just manifest in just the ways they conduct themselves. I mean... <clears throat> Zaz is just kind of destructive and lashes out at everything. He's very aggro and borderline crazy. I mean, Xena is prim and proper, but, like, she's also kind of... I think that's why that panel exists in the IDW comics, to illustrate that she's the one that gets the best treatment out of all of them, because, you know, yeah, she's afraid of getting hurt, too. But I definitely think all the characters are scared of him in some form or another. I mean... Um, what's his name? Zor is just a guy that basically wants death and views death as a beautiful thing. And even Silver remarks at one point, just like, how can you be this way? And to which he responds by saying, how can you be so disgustingly heroic and selfless? Just like, these are characters who suffer from domestic abuse. These are textbook symptoms of the hopelessness you endure with a sort of environment like that. You feel that everything is against you, and no one can really help you. And hell, um... What's his name? The Fat One. Uh... The, 
whatever. I'm blanking on his name, but, you know, he, you know, kind of gorges himself and, you know, is kind of stress eating all the time. These are characters, again, who I cannot stress enough. These are characters who are showing different ways of expressing the fact that they are scared. They are afraid, and generally they are characters that are very much overlooked by the Sonic community. But they are probably the most tragic characters, and the most brilliantly, you know, made. Or at least one of them. Now, I think, obviously, there's a lot of tragic characters in Sonic, like Whisper, uh, Surge, Shadow, so on and so forth. There is no shortage of that over the years. But these characters are the ones that definitely go overlooked by the community and the fan base. Because I think not a lot of people recognize this. And I think they deserve to get more, you know, attention drawn to this. Mr. Flynn, of course. Mr. Ian Flynn. Being the absolute, you know, idol that he is. I love Ken Pounders, don't get me wrong. But Ian Flynn is also just as good. I think both of them are excellent writers. I'll save that debate for another day. But the point is, he does an excellent job kind of showcasing and his artists that are working with him on, on this did an excellent job kind of showing the subtle implications that are there that, yeah, these characters are terrified. And, you know, as much as, you know, say, maybe being enslaved by Eggman might scare them, Savak scares them a hell of a lot more. And again, I cannot stress enough, Master Zick is kind of the guy that taught Zavok to be this way. So, yeah, kind of a problem that he gets away with it. And I think he's one of the most subtly brilliant, disgusting characters in the Sonic canon. Because he just kind of gets away with it and gets to be in retirement. Kind of his whole thing is being an old retired dude. <laughs> well, that and just, you know, but yeah, definitely needs to be talked about more. And as for me personally, as I mentioned before, this topic is deeply personal to me because <sighs> growing up, I came up, I grew up in an isolated, you know, countryside home where it was basically the most broken home you could imagine. It was hell on earth every fucking day. And there was no one to look, turn to for help because, again, countryside. No one could help you, and the police sure as shit didn't give a damn. You couldn't ask anyone for help. You couldn't ask friends, family. You couldn't ask the police or the neighbors. <laughs> what neighbors? It was just you getting beaten to death, or rather me. That's what it's like. Sometimes you just want to end it all. Thankfully, I'm in a better place now. I'm living in an apartment all by myself. Away from all that madness. But it still should be said that, you know, domestic abuse is a very real problem. And it should never be under undervalued by anyone. I think Mr. Flynn showed these characters exactly the sort of, you know, spotlight that they deserve, without, of course, going into too much depth. But it's definitely, he does a good job implying it, like, you know, like it was in the original game that they're from, so props to you, Mr. Flynn. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I just wish these characters could find someone to talk them through this, or someone to relate to, but at the end of the day, they're just too far gone. They're characters that have suffered hopelessness. Agony, torment, and pain. And I doubt they'll ever get better, no matter who talks to them. Surge might be a tragic character. There's this great new video by Sonic Theory talking about her. But, again, these are characters that just can't and the title of the video is, of course, uh, This Sonic Character is Broken Beyond Repair and is talking about Surge. But if you ask me, the Zeti are the, are the characters who are most definitely broken beyond repair. 
Absolutely no one is left in this world who can help them. It's, a, it's just you gotta fight them or else they'll kill you. And ain't no amount of talking gonna help them. Because once they're are like that, you're like that forever. Those effects last a lifetime. Anyway, this is Jack Mordick, the Sega fan. Signing off, see you in the next video.